I've been thinking quite a bit about holidays, uh, thinking about those a couple of years ago uh, that I really enjoyed. But uh, I'm looking forward to having a holiday in the UK this year. Hope the weather improves a bit, though. But anyway, the uh, our sort of definitive holiday as a family has to be the very first one that we took outside of the UK um, with our old... Um, uh, Volvo, it wasn't wasn't old then, it was uh, pretty much state of the art, I guess. Automatic, extra little row of seats in the boot pointed backwards, absolutely stuffed full f uh, with food and four children uh, going down to the south of France to have a proper middle class uh, canvas holidays holiday. Wendy wants me to make the point that um, uh, we weren't living high on the hog even though it felt a bit like it. We just got this cracking deal which allowed us to uh, uh, go across on the ferry to um, uh, go to the rail terminal in Boulogne and there uh, put our car on a transporter and uh, get into the train in uh, uh, the north of France and arrive right down in the south in the Pyrenees uh, the following morning, having spent the night in our couchettes um, dozing or sleeping uh, all the way down to the south of France. One of the images, there are many images from that holiday, but one of the images of that journey, probably uh, the overwhelming one, is uh, when we woke up in the morning, the kids looked out of the uh, train windows uh, and I looked with them. And as we went south, uh, we were passing fields and fields of sunflowers, all of which were appeared to be looking at us, pointed towards the morning sun. That's a, a really interesting picture about uh, a healthy direction of gaze and uh, its dynamics. Actually, I was blown away uh, during this week when uh, David uh, posted something from Psalm 34. Uh, I've been thinking about this subject for a couple of weeks and havering between uh, various uh, Bible verses, uh, but then came to the conclusion that I was actually going to use this just 24 hours before that, so it really impressed me. Um, but um, what uh, he put up was this from Psalm 34. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor soul, soul cried and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. It's, it's that bit there in verse 5. Those who look to him are radiant. You know, uh, when uh, uh, the flowers turn towards the sun, there, there's some theory, I think, in this as well, but they get warm and uh, it affects their germination uh, and their fertility. Um, by turning towards the warmth and the light, their purpose uh, for existence is fulfilled. And uh, when we turn towards the Lord, when we look to him, um, we receive comfort and reassurance. We also receive insight and help. Uh, we receive um, uh, grace and mercy and our purpose in life is fulfilled as well. I want to talk about uh, looking to the Lord, about uh, turning to face the sun. We're not talking about positivity. We're not talking about um, denial or, or stiff upper lip. Uh, not talking even about always looking on the bright side of life because sometimes there isn't a bright side uh, to look on um, because really we are uh, stuck. And sometimes it's not easy as well because we're facing up to the what ifs and the most likely is the lacks and the uh, possibility of catastrophe. But this picture of looking to the Lord comes back several times in Scripture. Let me find, find some of the references. Uh, the, um, uh, in Psalm 1, 2, 3, uh, the psalmist talks about, I lift my eyes up to you who sits enthroned in heaven as the 
eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master as the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of our miss of her mistress so our eyes look to the lord our god very well known psalm just a couple before that one i lift my eyes to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth over in Isaiah, the chapter which ends up with about uh, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It talks about what it means to wait on the Lord. I lift my uh, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these things? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength. Not one of them is missing. Now, of course, It is hard uh, when you're in the valley of the shadow, whether it's the valley of the shadow of death or uh, feeling like death or lack of resources or even the shadow pandemic, the valley of the shadow pandemic. Do you know the shadow pandemic is is actually a thing now that people write in papers about it and talking about it. But when it's hard to see the sun, do what the flowers do, because... Even when the sun's not out, they look towards the light. And when you don't know where the light is, then rely on the fact that there's a uh, a compass within you. What does it say about the compass? That there is our spirit uh, reacts to the Holy Spirit, uh, that um, we are born of God, that we're part with him. It's a compass that's within us. And uh, help yourself to, to do that. Uh, the way I find I can help myself is regularly reading uh, scripture, having a pattern of reading, not just where I'm targeting for preparation or reading books, but getting to the Bible for its own sake, spending time singing spiritual songs for their own sake, because that puts me in the way of having the light shine on me. Now, there are times, I don't know about you, but if I wake up during the night, this all becomes a whole scale of increased difficulty of actually worrying about what ifs and what's most likely to happen and uh, the resources we don't have and the possible catastrophes. Um, And we don't always get it right. And I think there is a baseline there. I'm going to think about some of those things over the next few weeks because I think we need to respond to uh, the shadow pandemic and uh, and not be hard on ourselves and to just encourage us uh, underneath uh, the everlasting arms. And even if we don't get it, he will get it. He'll catch us. So finishing off a bit here. There's uh, one more, couple more verses I want to mention. Steve last week talked about uh, the um, uh, the the blessing, didn't he? I don't know whether it's the uh, it's the ironic blessing. I think in in Numbers uh, six people call it that. Uh, the one that says, and there's been a song about it. Isn't it? The Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I suppose really what my message is, is it's all very well uh, talking about the Lord shining his face on us, but we need to turn towards the sun so that we can receive that. In fact, sometimes we've got our faces so near the ground uh, that we're looking on the dark side to the extent that the only place that the light of God can shine is on our backside. But as we turn towards the sun, it says... um, the the light that shines, this is in 2 Corinthians, it moves towards the New Testament, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Consequences this, chapter before, chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians, and we all who with unveiled face contemplate the Lord's glory, not a quick glance, but turning to face the sun all day long. The um, the result of that is that uh, we are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Those who look to him, look to him and be radiant. Turn to face the sun.